Live on YouTube. Nice. Ciao, ciao. All right. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's live. No, I even have the webcast. Okay. Everything good. The best laid plans. I like how it just all came apart at the last five minutes. <laughs> we're we're okay. five minutes late, right? Or uh, even more. A little bit more. That's yeah. like the really offensive to the German in you, huh? Absolutely. That's Every time I work with could... you guys, I feel so German. <laughs> yeah, because you are hey, German. To be fair, to be fair, I felt very prepared. We got on an hour beforehand. Two hours almost. Two hours almost. Of course, he was so nervous. Yeah. To completely pivot at the last second because it yeah. all fell yeah, apart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you made seven, it. Seven, seven uh, uh, spectators. Nine. Okay. okay, we should maybe just start. Yeah. Uh, give cool. me one second. We actually. Yes. I have trouble with, with getting the um, the graphics. Uh, we the can share screen. it differently. It's definitely different through Zoom. So thank you all for joining. Uh, essentially, we've been trying to come up with a way to meet together. Some of these calls happen uh, naturally between the three of us from time to time. And uh, the goal of this is just to have a conversation and I think to continue to have conversations over the next few weeks on Saturdays. And this one in particular is about, uh, obviously with the current situation and how everything's changed, uh, how to adapt your training from home when things change. And so it's not necessarily just for what's going on right now, although right now it's affecting everybody. So it's really clear, but uh, lots of people deal with layoffs due to injuries or any sort of circumstance that can happen in your life. Uh, so that's the topic for today. Uh, my name is Al or Alvaro, and I'm the head coach of the Mace Room Climbing Academy. I'm a coach and a setter, and I'm joined here with Enrico at the top there, top right. Say ciao, ciao, Enrico. Ciao, ciao. Good morning. And I'm joined with Udo on the bottom. Say ciao, ciao, Udo. Ciao, ciao. ciao. <laughs> What's the, we need to have a a more German what would be the German version of ciao ciao guten morgen okay perfect <laughs> guten abend <laughs> guten tag guten awesome tag. and yeah. so if you're joining us now we had uh basically just spent the last two hours preparing so that this would be relatively professional and then pivoted in the last 30 seconds to to zoom uh so that's explains why we were five minutes late or six minutes late if Udo's counting. Does that sound right? All right, and the main basically discussion that I wanted to open up Udo, uh, kind of when we started doing this the other day, uh, we started discussing about what we wanted to chat about and you made a mind map for- Yes, I- you, And you, you have it, oh, you printed it out. Of Wait, course. I didn't... <laughs> of course. You didn't to even... save you, always this is this is actually part of competition climbing. Always expect the unexpected, right? Uh... And as trustworthy as you seem to be during our rehearsals, I still sense this. Uh, that you, you know, that you, that you might not have it. But, it well, really, when it really well why don't you show it off? Is it um... okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's let let me show it off. This is uh, just a mind map. I hope I hope you can read it. Um, and it's how to practice uh, movement of the wall. You know, and uh, so I one thing that that is true for any uh, thoughts that you put into your training is that you gain ownership or agency. So by by making things up for yourself you already made a huge step forward uh, towards your progression as a climber, as an athlete, because there's so much power in things that you um, dream up yourself. 
that uh, they're, they're a lot more powerful than anything any coach could tell you. So that's one thing. Then, then I have different mantras, you know, like uh, find something difficult and repeat it till it's easy. You know, just as a, as a general idea of how you can go about your own training and your own thoughts. And then there's also uh, the idea of maybe uh, keeping a skill lock where you write all these things down, how you progress. So something in, in general, I think many athletes, uh, okay, sh should I talk about, uh, are we seeing the graphic now uh, no full screen? Um, yeah, I'm gonna try okay. to put the graphic okay. on full screen right now. Okay, cool, yes. Uh, and you see a challenge point. And this is something I, I think many uh, climbers are missing uh, anyhow. That's not only for, for these times, but uh, the challenge point means that you practice at a difficulty that is uh, good for you. You know, so you, you can fail a couple of times, but the majority of your attempts should be su successful. And I think many, there's a, a little disconnect for many climbers that they see something on social media and they think they, they have to practice exactly that. Uh, when in fact they should scale it back quite a bit. And, and uh, as I said, practice uh, at the difficulty where they can always be successful. So that would be a challenge point. And uh, something we, we always mentioned in, in our camps that uh, Enrico L and I uh, did is this, this um, decision if you are practicing or if you're performing and of course that's that's really uh, i mean obvious nowadays because it's really unclear when would when the next time is where you actually have to perform but uh, i still feel that uh, people kind of of get mixed up if they're actually practicing or performing. And especially nowadays with uh, social media, it gets really difficult because if your intentions are to post something on Instagram later, then you are performing, obviously, you know, it's a performance and nothing against it. And in fact, it's really, I think it's lacking in many climbers preparation that they are not exercising in, in a performance state of mind. And so far is a good thing. But again, it's, it's, in my mind, it's really important not to get mixed up between uh, practicing and perform. So, um, so one of the things yeah. I, I kind of want to, if I could jump in a little bit, uh, if you could go back to the ownership and agency, because I think that's yeah. the thing that most people are struggling with right now. If you, especially if you're used to getting coached. Uh, yeah. I mean, even if we, it, when we go into a climbing gym uh, all the time, I think we give up a sense of agency in the sense that you're not creating the routes for yourself. A lot of times yeah, you go yeah. in, the route setters made a, a, a boulder for you or a route. Uh, yeah. So I think it, if you could speak a little bit more to the ownership or agency part of it and, mm -hmm. and the challenges of that. Yeah, yeah I think it's really, um, if, you're, if you're coached, if you have a fantastic gym, that's, that's all good, but uh, of course you don't develop uh, this, this part, you know, it's not your, it's not your ideas, it's not your boulder problems that you're struggling with. And uh, it's also not, not your, even your periodization, if you want to look at it uh, on the longer term, it's all, uh, somebody tells you what to do. And if you, um, I think if we're talking competition climbing, the most important factor is uh, decision making, you know, problem solving decision making. And you might want to ask yourself in your regular practice, as it was with a coach or with a fantastic uh, climbing gym, how much time did you actually spend uh, per training session with decision making? And with this ownership and, and agency, uh, I think you can maybe uh, spend more time with problem solving decision making because this is what you have to do now if you try to find some some training in your in your apartment that's already a lot more of, of decision making and problem solving right there and so i think it's a ch chance did this answer your question al yeah does it make sense hello Where are you al? <laughs> sorry uh, <laughs> i muted myself I think 
that does answer my question. Even for me as a coach, I feel like I lost the sense of agency when we and ownership, obviously through this whole transition, because you can't coach the way that you're coaching before. Um, I don't know, Enrico, you feel like that too? It's been yeah. a challenge. Yeah, it's pretty challenging, of course. But it. But but, but like, like Enrico and I, we were talking beforehand. Now, if you look at the training facility that uh, Stefano Gisolfi, you know, like one of the best lead climbers has uh, on his daily life. Uh, uh, of course, from uh, I think it's now it's improving since he lives in Arco. But uh, like I think the the most impressive, or actually there are quite a few really impressive examples of where uh, super successful athletes like the Slovenian girls in the, uh, in the 90s or uh, the Russian boulders in, in the uh, 2000s, uh, th their facility was really uh, like... Unpresentable. It was really nothing. It was really nothing. And, but they came up with all the ideas as soon as they found a piece of wood and they, they would uh, glue it or nail it to their wooden board and then they would create uh, some fantastic boulder problems for themselves on this uh, wall, you know, or strength exercises. And like in 2011, the, the Russian boulders were invincible. And I think still up to this day, the, like somebody like Dima Sharifutinov was, I, I don't think that his physical skills are surpassed right now. I think what we saw there was like the peak of how how strong, like in terms of relative strength, strength to weight ratio, I don't think that we ever saw a stronger athlete than- I feel uh, like uh, the big thing with that is the determination, I guess, to continue to do, like yeah. uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And a lot of times I feel like if you really want something, you're gonna figure out a way to do it. But even for me, I feel like figuring that part of what you want is the important part. Because that that really leads to the, the hunting around for things to do. Uh, I, I feel like if you get, a, during this period of time, which is difficult in itself, but if you're like, this is something that I want to improve on, I want to improve on my coordination because I just, I, I have trouble with coordination. That if that's something that you want to do, then it helps you lead down a pathway of like the tools that you can find in home to work on it. Uh, because like you said, I, I think in their mind for those athletes, they're just like, well, I don't, I'm going to win and I don't care how I do it. Right. And it takes a bit of confidence that I think that most people don't necessarily have because they're used to the fact of, okay, like we have a lot of things of the, like this available to us uh, all the time. So how, how do you get, how do you get some of that agency back? Like, what are some things that yeah, are- Yeah, maybe we should talk about the three, uh, I just had like three main coordination, momentum and balance as something that I think fairly easy to bring at least some improvement you know maybe you don't cover the full spectrum to what you want to prepare for in your in your climbing goals but i think you can do a lot you know and uh, just if you combine any strength exercise with any balancing uh, challenge that means like even getting up while balancing these balls on your hands like this you know or even like moving it like this, you work your extensors and you get immediate feedback from when the ball falls off, you know, and you get a really good, like this, this is why I think that this is something that uh, for coordination, you get a really good feeling to uh, where your uh, um, hand in this case, or your feet is in space. And this, this is something really easy to do. And you see this right now a lot on, on Instagram. People are doing pull-ups with toilet paper on uh, stacks of toilet paper. I think I saw like uh, six or seven <laughs> uh, rolls of toilet paper on their head while uh, she was doing a, a pull-up. Or uh, uh, all, all I mean, You can find a lot see. of inspiration for sure online, right? That, I think totally, the, the totally. thing for most people is that they're going to feel, and this is a question that happens really frequently is, okay, how does that, what does that have to do with rock climbing? Yeah, with rock climbing, it's true. I mean, that is why in this, in this mind map, I wrote a uh, context, 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 you know, so uh, basically, uh, so what does it have to do? Like what I just did, for example, um, one one aspect like even in rock climbing is that you have you try to uh, avoid to have like a lot of peak force when you pull on a hold so you want ideally you want to do 
every move as smooth as possible. And again, I think uh, if you're, uh, I don't think I know if you balance something, then there's a limit to how jerky uh, uh, you can be. You know, so uh, I think this is an instant improvement. If you do this uh, quite a bit, you uh, get smoother movement and you will benefit from this, even in rock climbing. Uh, like I'm, I'm calling rock climbing like on rock. Yeah, so yeah. Say, in Germany, I guess just say, climbing. <laughs> Even sort of climbing, or uh, I guess if we're making some sort of distinction yeah. between the different. So, so this styles. is really something that this is why I think it's really uh, useful to combine, as I said, to do, balance something on your hand while you're doing something, like even doing a, a, a lock off while still manipulating uh, with the other hand with a free hand. Some, uh, as as Sean McCall does, sometimes you know, like flipping weights. Or with the other hand, you get you add a certain element. You, know, you add complexity. You somehow have to absorb the forces from the other hand, like yeah. saying you're you're flipping weights, and uh, so th th these are all really basic exercises and really simple ideas. And uh, but I still think that they help a lot. And again, we can do like if we come to balance or so. I think you can really like even if you. Uh, care a lot about the context like you can do so many things with your feet improving your your, your feet and your coordination of your feet mm. yeah and, and honestly i think you can hear me yeah we can yeah. hear you yeah i don't know why it's kind of weird right now the <laughs> audio for me but and i think it's very important to you know while we are working for example you were talking about locking on the end board so that is making us working on pretty much one di dimension with the other art. So pretty much with the other arm or with the legs, we can easily move in a tri-dimensional way, kind of recreating a space more similar to a climbing wall. That of course is what mostly of the people are missing or are feeling that missing climbing in a climbing wall, they're gonna lose their ability to climb and so it, honestly, I mean, the, I think it's very important to to work on coordination and try to reproduce a similar space to a climbing wall in a in a simple way. Just keep hanging, but then moving your body around or your arm or your pretty much your legs. Yeah. In a similar, and I think like what you said, similar skills that are getting used. And I, for Udo, I think you mentioned it in terms in your mind map of context. And uh, I, here, I think it would be also like uh, sports specificity when you're training. Um, because I don't know if, about you guys, whenever I took, there was a period in times where to me, everything, the most important thing in, in climbing was finger strength. And I, I was trading climbing time for hanging on a hangboard and essentially just increasing the amount that I could pull. But I also got worse at rock climbing in a lot of ways. And uh, I think that's like the, my concern, for instance, for the athletes on the team right now is they can spend time getting stronger through this for sure. And they can definitely come out stronger on the other side, but it's always a question of like, how do we continue the skills that we were working on? Uh, because that's almost more of what I care about. Yeah, and I, I, I like at least on 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 the world level, you very rarely see that uh, your strength training converts to uh, or transfers into your climbing performance very well. This is really the problem. Like even what what Enrico just said, like if, if you do a lot of of hangboarding, that's perfectly fine, but then you're doing a whole lot of one thing. And you will certainly get stronger in this one thing. But really, if you look, even maybe you have some video footage of your projects and climbing, how many holes you hold, really perfectly horizontal holes that you have to pull on and have make contact with, do you actually have in your in your projects, in your climbing? Now, and I, actually, how much pulling action is actually in your climbing? Now, but, uh, because uh, this is another thing. I, I've, I feel that people are still doing too many pull-ups, you know, and uh, 
I, I like at least in, in modern uh, uh, bouldering, there's no, and, and even not in lead climbing. If you really watch uh, the movement, there's not so much pulling. Actually, it's uh, mostly about raising your center of gravity so that the rest can uh, the rest of the body can follow. But it's not so much pulling. So this would be one advice. You know, like going back to Al's question, what what does it do for your climbing? Is that you really go back to really how long do I hold this hold? Now, how long does it take me to get to the next hold? And then you you uh, write this down. I mean, you don't, it sounds really German, but you could, you know, you could basically analyze your project and then try to replicate that at home, uh, at home as closely as possible. You know, and extract I... of chasing abstract goals of some uh, strength that you might uh, uh, try to get. Well, I think, and the, the additional challenge on top of this is, I, I don't know, for you as coaches, this has happened to me a lot, but uh, there's obviously this anxiety that comes from an athlete or for anybody, if they're having to lay off or their situation has changed for a period of time, for instance, like if they have a real serious injury. Uh, and the major concern is how much weaker they're going to be at the end of it. And it's never really, and to me, that's always been really interesting because it's never a conversation of like, I'm going to get so much worse skill wise. It's really, really, uh, it's, it's really focused on like that I'm going to lose my strength. And uh, to me, yeah. once the focus shifts on that, it's like, of course, yeah, that that's going to bring a lot of anxiety and make you want to put even more time into it. Uh, and I think dealing with that challenge a little bit of like, how do I stay sharp enough? Cause if I didn't spend any time on a slab wall for a long period of time, it doesn't matter how much stronger I got. I'm going to get quite a bit worse in that kind of climbing. Yes. Yeah, I mean, with this, yeah. No, no, go, go ahead. I think it's <laughs> what we were talking about uh, in the last days is mostly about, you know, being focused on other aspects that they are very, very important as coordination, agility, and, you know, core stability, and, uh, of course, you know, flexibility too, because in the end is, of course, I think, we we feel bad when we stay away from climbing but i think the muscle memory and the ability of climb can be built pretty fast when you are back on the wall again but the problem is that when you have on the wall to deal with other other aspects that you are not ready to deal with as flexibility or you know of course, I can see I was talking yesterday with, uh, uh, with the guy in the team. I think he was very anxious about, oh, I'm not he looking, I'm not getting better in he looking. It's, I'm, very, I'm very bad, how I can practice. And of course, you're going to be back on the wall and practice it kind of on how to place the foot. But the biggest problem is how you can expect to perform a good he looking if you are not flexible enough or if you have not a good uh, feeling about your balance when you have to rock over, over and he look, and if you have not the power to stand up over it. And so yeah. I think it's, it's very important uh, when you are off the wall uh, to work on all the other aspects and don't be kind of so anxious about losing the climbing skills because I think as soon as you'll be back on the wall, they're going to be back with you. And so that's a good time to work on a lot of other aspects as the agility and the, again, the coordination, you know, yeah. we were talking with Udo the other day that it's very hard for the athletes sometimes to reproduce a sequence. And, uh, you know, when they see a, a classic dynamic, move now on comp style and it, it takes usually a lot of time for some athletes to reproduce the right sequence and so maybe it's a good time and there's a lot of potential uh, outside and off the wall to, to work on this kind of aspect so improve your coordination and using different tools as just yeah. the floor. 
I, I think, but, but uh, yes, it's all right. But just two more things. And now I, I, I'm, from my experience, the transfer is a lot easier from, from like really abstract things you might do in your living room to the actual climbing is you is uh, when you take your your living room stunts really really seriously you know like you should be really specific like if you try little hopping sequences then you, you do like hop 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 jump and and uh, like everything in between in in you, you can do this everywhere basically then mark down little marks and really try to hit these marks and be as as <laughs> precise as possible that means if, if your mark on the floor uh, your intention was to hit it with your big toe then really try hard to uh, hit it with your big toe and don't stop, you know, don't think in repetition, but really you should hit it eventually with your big toe as your intention was. Because in climbing, this is what, what it's about. You know, you have to be really precise. And uh, if you get into the uh, uh, rhythm of, of being rather sloppy and being really focused on repetitions and focus on being pumped and, and feel uh, uh, tired afterwards, you, you're not working this precision. This would be something I would really recommend that uh, you take any exercise, anything, you know, you almost have to fool yourself a little bit, you know, as if your life depends on it. You know, like if I jump on a, on a yoga block with one foot, then uh, I should pretend my life uh, uh, depends on it. And, and if it I'm standing, if I'm balancing with the forefront of my foot, you know, uh, I... I <laughs> Same and thing. we talked about how this is a, it we talked about this before about how it's like a if you it's all about the process i think the important part here is yeah. not necessarily that you're learning a, uh, a a skill that's directly applicable like even if it's the skill is the process of how you're figuring out movement and i think that's a really important part uh to take away from something like this is that's the part that's directly applicable, especially for competition climbing. If you're thinking about any sort of movement that requires like your arms and your legs to do something different. Uh, for a lot of people that takes a long time to learn. Like if it takes you 14, 15 tries to say, this is what I wanna do, touch this and grab this at the same time as with my foot doing this, uh, then that's probably too long when it comes to a four minute or a five minute time window to figure out how to like read beta correctly, execute it properly and make enough decisions and correct decisions to be successful. So it's, it's little things like that, even though it seems important, it's I think one of the hardest things to do is to practice decision making and like visualization in that sense. I'm gonna try to do this and see how close you get to actually doing it. Yeah, yeah. even in terms of maximum strength, you know, if you look at the brain activity of a, of a world-class weightlifter, it's much more organized. You know, this guy knows what he's doing. He will uh, perform. And the same is true for hard climbing moves. You know, all the, like somebody like Tomoa has it all, knows what he's going to do. You know, and he's very clear about it. And this is, you can practice the same state of mind in your living room skills. You know, anything that's hard for you, you can practice this. You know, and you can see how easily you get frustrated and you can try to pull yourself back and be not frustrated. You can try out some, some breathing exercises like nasal breathing if you're a little bit overexcited for, for some balance exercise or anything. You know, there's so much uh, um, stuff on on social media that you can look at uh, but eventually you really have to uh, uh, <laughs> spend the time in the really struggling with a skill you know i think that that's really helpful to, to go through the whole process of frustration also of plateauing that's the other thing you know, like if you try something really hard you know it's in, mo in many situations, you make progress really quickly and then you plateau. Like I, I could really quickly juggle with uh, three balls, but it was, uh, or it was always one, two, three, and then I got stuck. And it took me two weeks to get over this uh, uh, stuck. You know, every time I, I got stuck again, basically reinforced this pattern of getting stuck. Of, uh, and uh, so, and the same is true for many skills. 
no and uh, then you learn how how helpful it sometimes is to to step back and sleep over it you know and maybe the next morning you you're flashing whatever your your project was and i i think that's a very worthwhile experience to go through that and again like with the maximum strength that's really uh, worthwhile to consider that uh, your brain allows you uh, strength you know it affords you strength it's not something it's not a muscular thing it's a neuromuscular thing and so, so visualization can be really helpful as you said okay let's say for people who are fortunate enough to have like a little home wall or something like that um Enrico, what can what can they be doing at home? I I think they should be like they could be setting for themselves because they no longer have people that are setting boulders for themselves. But what could they be doing at home with a wall? Yeah, I think of course you know you it's it's very important. Again, try to of course keep yourself in in a good shape climbing wise. But again, having maybe small walls is is very important to be creative and maybe not think only about climbing and pulling as usual, but try to reproduce some different moves, try to set kind of something that you cannot easily do, so challenge yourself, you know? And one very important thing we were talking about is just the biggest problem is every time you have some constraint in training is that the easiest way for a climber is just try to pull, just pulling every time we think about pulling, pulling harder, reach farther holds, using smaller holds. And then we forget the most important part is that every time, every single movement should be uh, generated by the hip from the legs. And so I think it's very important if you have a small wall right now and no one is setting for you try just to try to set for yourself some move that looks i would say almost impossible or hard at the beginning and again there's a lot of you know videos on instagram and so it's just try to challenge yourself because otherwise it's very simple to stay on your pattern on your comfort zone and you know and and maybe just be stuck in what you are only good in climbing on and on the classic movements. So I don't know, you stay square and you start keep pulling back up and down, up and down, up and down. Of course, you're going to be fit, but you're not going to be a better climber. And so, of course, then it's hard because it depends a lot on which kind of wall you have, which kind of holds you have. But again, try to be creative. For me, it was very fun taking a look at, for example, on Stefano Gisolfi he has a very nice, small home wall, uh, but it's very, let's say, steep and with very high quality and variety of holes, but the angle is pretty much the same. So what he starts to do is start playing around with this massive wood ball. I don't know if you guys, have you seen it? And it yeah. was literally pulling and then this massive ball was hanging from the ceiling and so was pulling at the beginning and then kind of rock overing mantling over so pretty much to me from outside it was genius because it was recreating a sort of stemming dihedral uh, and kind of push and mantle over a volume as in a comp because he's a competitor climber but he was pretty much pushing himself and finding himself on a, on a weird terrain that his own wall was not able to, to give him because it's just a 40 degrees kind of steep wall. So, uh, it, in, I, I think like one of the good things about essentially is like you can really help yourself with the choice of holds that you have. If you have an option to do that, the the more in cut that they are, the more forgiving they're going to be for body positioning and the better they're going to be for like producing strength, but the worse they're going to be for like really forcing you to learn good, uh, good yeah. climbing. Uh, and I think choosing holds that are just bad in, in all, all directions, but one essentially is like a really good way to, to help your climbing 
on the wall. Would you agree with that, Udo? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And I think like even even like this is Stefano Gisolfi of fantastically strong, but for for weaker climber that feel that they are stuck with a maybe too steep wall, you know, why not put a, uh, some footholds on a chair? And uh, maybe mark them with tape so that you're only allowed, say, your big toe, for example. You know, be really specific about these things, or, or uh, be well. So at, at the end, that... it's about being creative. You know, like if we maybe next time we can look at some walls, uh, wall designs, and come up with ideas. But, but it's really about that because this is really what the what the Russians, for example, did. You know, like yeah, yeah. Or I wish I had the picture. In the past. I wish I had the picture yeah, of that. Do you remember that? of Dimitri. No, the, the one time we had, uh, for one of the camps, because we were running out of space and we didn't really want to use it. Uh, and we just took a piece of plywood and laid it like at five degrees and then put a bunch of foot chips on it. And uh, yeah. I, we were just working on the kids, making sure that they were able to kind of walk and transfer their weight from one to the other and they were just walking yeah. across and it was funny because we just set it up and we're like oh, i wonder if they're going to really like wanting to do this and it was all just we just laid it up against plywood screwed a bunch of foot chips on which you could really do anything anything that you can put and it has puts a little you, you know some volume on the wall and then the kids like that that practice we didn't tell them anything the first thing they went to was like oh that's new we're gonna go over there and then they just started walking around and like making games off of it um yeah and, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and uh, 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 yeah go ahead yeah yeah i was just yeah. adding one thing that of course as you were mentioning for a, a regular wall if it's a little bit too steep or whatever and you want to make it a little bit easier or more challenging you can have a chair underneath, you can have just a loop of rope or an elastic band on the holes and, and just, you know, you know, pull and at some point use one of the band or uh, the rope, just put your foot on and in the little loop and then push hard, you know, as a kind of, you know, artificial climbing. But of course, yeah. it's making you moving on different uh, totally, on a different totally. orientation and of course can support you but again it's not about pulling as uh, Al was mentioning it's very important to have no Inca holds because of course on the Inca holds you can easily hang on your skin and on your tendons and you don't need to to kind of move your hip to engage the holds and and then yeah. pretty much you don't need to climb you need just to hang and pretty much as a picture on the living room, you know, just, just hanging. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one thing, just, uh, just in general, uh, even on the highest level, you see climbers that really try to, even when they do skating moves, they try to get their hands on the hold. And very often their hip is trailing the movement, you know, whereas uh, like all the Japanese climber, or most of the successful boulders, they will always lead with a hip. And this is something you can really try uh, during these times. You can really try to, to uh, do the same thing. You know? Try to make you lead confidently, lead with your hip. Because ultimately, I think, uh, in, 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 at least in the competition context, it's a, a matter of confidence. You see really uh, by... by by not leading with a hip, you can tell that a climber might be not confident in this move. You know, like so. Uh, regardless what you do, try, uh, as Enrico said, you know, try to set yourself problems that you initiate with your uh, with your hip, and then try to pull as little as possible. Or even on the if you only have in cut holes, then just hold them with with two fingers and and don't crimp them. You know, and try to do the same move. You know, create your own ch challenges. So for a lot of people, I think they would feel like this is really only applicable. Well, a couple of things to go off of that. So uh, it, it's rare, I think, for almost all climbers that they don't have a performance that they have to prepare for. So for competition climbers, the, the competition climbing schedule is pretty grueling. And it seems like most of them, especially here in the U.S., are like training to, to compete year round. 
Uh, but even for, for most climbers, if you're climbing outdoors, it always feels like uh, you want to do your best at every time you step into the gym, right? Um, like most people feel since climbing is so similar to the game is so close to practice. Like every time you go in, you feel like, oh, I'm not climbing at my best. And so this is like a really rare, I think, situation in which most people don't have to prepare for anything necessarily because we just, we can't, like, there's nothing that we know that is going to happen. And I've noticed that that it seems like that's given people a little bit of freedom or felt feeling a little almost like guilt free to try other things that they wouldn't try otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think as, that's and really valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So absolutely. for a lot of people, I think it can feel like, uh, well, if I'm doing this right now, uh, well, I could be hangboarding or I could be climbing. So I'm not going to, why should I spend time on an agility ladder or, Doing because it, class. yeah again yeah. If, if, if 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 really like if, if your goal is this one climb where you're dealing with horizontal tiny holes uh, and nothing more you know like it, it, that's a general rule you know like, you, the simpler the more focused your goal is the more focused your preparation has to be you know or can be you know, like yeah. you can, if you, if you, in the ideal world, if you happen to have Aktion Direct in your, in your basement, you know, on the, on the, on the wall that has exactly the same angle and the same holes and you train on it a lot, you totally increase your chance on Aktion Direct once you get there, once the crisis is over, you know, totally, totally. But for, for competition climbers, especially for the boulders, is really, you don't know where, <laughs> Uh, uh, what the root setters have in mind, you know, what they're preparing for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you you need to do it all. You know, so you, uh, you can't be so specific. Yeah. No, and, it's and also about like, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Udo. No, no, it's, I said it's more like also about the time you're spending. Like, even if you have 24 hours, these are quickly gone, you know, if you try to. Uh, uh, do everything perfectly like if you follow this certain grip strength routine you know like religiously you have to have a lot of rest to to be strong uh, the next time you're training and you it's, it's kind of depressing like how little even professional climbers get done you know <laughs> and, uh, and and so i think just from the sheer efficiency it's uh, i think especially for these times and especially for competition climate, the time is better spent in like spending one hour with this skill, you now resting a little bit, maybe doing another skill, and then maybe even tomorrow you don't need a rest day at all. And so overall, you get a lot more done. Now this is the other, it's, it's about diminishing returns. You know? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we don't know how strong you are, but it's really, if you say your, your finger strength is, 90% of what genetically you can uh, achieve, uh, you probably need a, a lot of time to get it up to 95%. You know, and the question is if this time wouldn't be better invested in something else. Yeah, and, and I think to me it's not only about, so right now is a, is a good opportunity to, to work on different aspects, I think not only for competition climber, of course, for them too, because they are very exposed to such a huge variety and diversity in terms of moves, coordination, skills required. But in the end, for a regular climber too, you know, improve on your rhythm, pace could be very, very efficient for the future for your project, you know, or improve on your lower body flexibility and strength is not going to make you just a steep performing climber, but the day you, you're going to have to perch or rock over, over yeah. a top of a steep wall, you're going to be ready instead of having a shaking tiny uh, leg, not doing yeah. their job. Pretty much, I think it's a great opportunity uh, to improve. Al was talking about you know, dancing, why not? Sometimes, most of the time, climbing is about rhythm and having a good pace. And of course, you know, if you, if you can improve on every single aspect, it's probably 
right now, especially because we are mostly off us, we are off the wall. We, we're going to be back on the wall and it's going to be easy to find again the good sensation in going up, but we can find ourselves uh, better, you know, on, on a lot of different aspects, uh, yeah. as coordination yeah. and flexibility and yeah. As you said, as, uh, before I, I made it sound as a little bit as if you, we, like with the intensity that uh, you try to fake the intensity, like even if it's something ridiculous that you challenge yourself with in your living room, uh, uh, try to make it as intense as possible. But now that Enrico is mentioning dancing, you know, I, I think the other super important aspect is that you really enjoy and are engaged by what you're doing. You know, I think that's worth, and if this is fingerboarding, perfect, perfect. But if you feel your, uh, your thoughts drifting and it's not really, you're not really engaging anymore, it might be, you might be bring more improvement if you deal with a TikTok step dance sequence that you saw somewhere, you know, like uh, if you enjoy this, yeah. you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, especially this, this aspect, of, it's not so much about like having fun or uh, uh, enjoyment, but being engaged, you know, so uh, uh, for me, for example, if I cannot climb when I think of something else, you know, I, I, and at a certain stress level, I don't even try to climb because I know that you know, my, my, my thoughts will be drifting. And if you get the sensation in your training, you know, like you're thinking of something else, then that's okay for like a little jog or a little something that repetitive and not really hard to do that's perfectly fine if your if your thoughts are drifting but it shouldn't happen uh, with with any kind of exercise you know you shouldn't be able to uh, you should be fully engaged in what you're doing for, uh, that's super important yeah i think if you're if you're able to do whatever you want to do dead tired um then it's probably not helping that decision making and like competition side of of your climbing or even just like your technical side of climbing anything that you're that's you need to work on requires you to like be really mentally involved in the process yeah. and it, we have that when we talk about this stuff a lot of times at, at the gym we have like an analogy of car and then driver so <laughs> this is the analogy that we talk about sometimes about the kids or or a climber in general and we'll say oh he's a really good driver in a bad car um and essentially just meaning okay well like the car would be if you're a ferrari you have fantastic finger strength uh you got like all the tools flexibility everything uh and then the driver is just like the parts that are technical that your brain controls essentially like the skills the soft skills and uh i think really most people are just focusing on 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 getting a better car, car. Yeah, yeah yeah and but they don't know how to drive <laughs> but they don't know how to drive and so it's but i know from from uh, michael schumacher is from close uh, uh, to cologne it's actually really close to where uh, jan hoyer uh, is from and uh, I know from Michael Schumacher that he, you couldn't beat him with any car. Yeah, exactly. So, so as long as it has four tires, Michael Schumacher and Michael Schumacher sits in it, he will be faster than you are. Yeah, and so, if uh, imagine, so, and we're I always heard this so many times from people that were actually driving against him, you know, like in his go kart days. And we, so, yeah, we kind of like. A, you usually say is most people focus okay if i i would just go faster if i just had a better engine and then you end up just crashing into the wall uh, harder yes a lot of the yeah, time yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, totally. uh totally and, and, so, and i think this is a huge reason for injuries you no know, like uh absolutely i think people uh, uh train too much too hard uh don't balance uh, their efforts very well and and there is this element like especially nowadays in social media of uh, it's almost glamorous to be injured you know like at least I, i'm not saying uh, that uh, anybody's getting german thing you could possibly say no yeah but it implies that you tried hard so you yeah, get yeah. some credit you know where in fact it's it's, it's I mean, there's so many athletes that 
didn't make big champ uh, climbers that didn't make big championships because they were injured every two years there were championships and it happened that uh, always in this in this cycle they were injured you know so uh and uh i mean it's and, nice to drive around in the in the nice car yeah yeah yeah, yeah obviously yeah, yeah. i but, mean but, nobody uh, again you know like it's hard to notice if you're going if you're driving really well in a ford fiesta you know or like yeah. a well, you know. But then we are back again to do like one of the questions that might arise. You know, like how do you know that you're driving well in the Ford Fiesta? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's when you overtake uh, a Ferrari. But I think that's easy. If you, if you... <laughs> again, that's it's, it's basically it's the same thing. You have to give yourself a challenge and see how how well you're doing. You know, put your, put a slalom uh, thing and and see how how it's going for you with the Ford Fiesta. Yeah, yeah. But in general, um, I mean, I guess some takeaways for a lot of people. I think a lot of the things that are easy to fall fall into during this time is to just focus on improving the car, uh, because those are the things that we're kind of used to, and that's going to be like uh, hangboarding. And uh, honestly, uh, there's f quite a few things that even flexibility i think although it gets neglected that's and mobility those are going to be kind of improvements to the car you're going to eventually need to learn how to how to use it once you get it but the challenge is how do we get better as climbers during this time let, let yeah let me one thing like when uh, enrico uh, talked about hangboarding you now and maybe do something else you now you're you're still hangboarding but you give yourself another challenge and the challenge would be like a typical climbing challenge obviously would be to uh, get to some footholds so uh, and uh, uh, like there, there are several exercises one i uh, posted a couple of months ago on instagram you hang with both hands and then you let go of one hand and try to freeze this position as much as possible you know and be really again try to be really uh, madame to so kind of frozen you know like so if you hang like this and then you let go of course you, beforehand you have to think of how you align your body no, so there's a little bit of strategic uh, thinking that you can uh, practice this way. So that would be one one idea what you could do, like uh, release and freeze kind of exercises. And the other one would be really uh, hanging on the board, as Enrico said, and then trying in the air, you're going for some tiny footholds. And you can have a, a partner, you know, or... or you can be really strict, you can look on, on video or you put maybe a broomstick down and try to touch with your big toe again, try to touch this and then really be strict about it and think, okay, if this would be a limestone, if this would be action, action direct, you know, would my foot really be on this foothold and could it engage with this foothold? There is a, a sequence in, in um, in uh, silence in the uh, Adam Ondra video and he just puts his foot on the table and I think very few people could put their foot on the table as Adam does you know and this is one thing with Adam as, as soon as his feet touch anything any surface they're engaging with the surface you know and this is something you can really, even if you do it in the air if you picture that you have to engage with your feet and really hold them on this per perfectly still in this position you have a very you can scale it up <laughs> to to the point that even adam couldn't do it and you, but you can also regress it really easily you know that would be yeah. uh, I, ideas uh, how to to uh, kind of be a little bit more sure that you're moving to the right direction and that your the quality of your movement is really improving and because it's good I to just what, yeah. do you think it, it's a it, so something like that it i guess uh for people who are just getting started just keeping it as simple as they can towards the beginning it goes back to your like challenge and making sure that it's the right level like how do you know when it's the right level because if for yeah as a, i think I, I would opt i would go for like uh uh, maybe for your first session, you know, you have from from what we are talking about, you have some idea what, that you can try out, and it should be uh, maybe go for eighty percent of success rate first, and then to, uh, try to make it consistent. Like like for example, in juggling, it's really important. Uh, like 
lots and lots of people, or even in gymnastics, the, the performance that they actually show is really easy for them. But of course, their coaches and the whole system have to make absolutely sure that everything goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> that nothing goes wrong. So they basically, they, they, if, they, if they're capable of doing a, t a straight 10, then they will dial it back to the performance at maybe nine to have a little uh, safety margin. You know? And this is all, uh, you can take some advice from, from this, you know, to really, if you have a, on your first time, you're trying something, you have a success rate of 80%, then maybe next day you try to uh, uh, make it 90% and then also to repeat it maybe 10 times in a row. You know, like or oh, a couple of times in a row, or, or or hold it. You know, like even when I just said freeze. You know, the question is, how long do you freeze? And ultimately, I think you you can only say you're in perfect control if you do at least one inhale exhale cycle. This is actually a really good uh, 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 idea for any kind of calisthenics. Also, try to uh, uh, get everything, regardless what you do. Like for me, a front lever is only a strict front lever if you can do one uh, inhale exhale cycle, because then it's really applicable. If you if you're pressing as crazy and you're getting a big blue hat, you know, then you know, nice, you know, but it, it takes too much effort. You won't. Uh, uh, be using this this strength in the climb and if you do you you, you fall off the next move you know so uh, this would be a, a, a progression that you in, get yourself in a difficult position and then try one x uh, one uh, breath cycle and yeah. of course you can also i mean to be really uh, competent in this position you do three of them you know three complete inhale exhale cycles and then you don't have to mess up, uh, mess with the with the, with the timer. stopwatch or something with timer. Yeah. You know? And another good thing is try to do when you want to test if you really kind of interiorize the move or the movement or the exercises. Just try to to do it and perform it when you are tired. That could be also, another yeah. good test. You yeah. know, you can jump the rope for one minute, two minutes. So you are a little bit fatigued and tired, and so you have to be focused, especially if we are talking about something related to be coordinated and precise. So maybe you can make a tennis ball hanging in front of your, far away in front of your hang board, and then you make yourself with tired you. with whatever, jumping rope, burpees, or other stuff. Yeah. And then you try to perform again and reach it, very precise, engaging the core, touching with the toe, squeezing within the toes. And, you know, you can, you can find a way to, to challenge yourself, I think, in a, in a lot of different way. And again, a good suggestion, mostly for the ones that don't have really a, a wall, is try to make your hang board as much or your hanging as as much tridimensional as possible so one thing that sorry I was, no, one no, thing go, that go, i go. that i really like for on the hang board and that i used to do this is if you're hanging and you want to add just a little bit of challenge if you can have somebody else throw a ball and you try to catch it between your feet uh, yeah it requires a lot of timing and kind of getting like the the forces in the right direction and you can make, do it with all sorts, like you could throw a soccer ball, you could throw a tennis ball, uh, and it introduces a little bit of swinging and it makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. I, that yeah. was something that yeah. I, I always really liked doing. So yeah. just yeah. like having somebody, I guess the, the point is just basically, if you can do it with your brain turned off, then it's probably only really helping you fitness wise which is fine yeah. it's not to say that if you that do. if that i don't uh, i even doubt if this is really the case you know like because you never have this uh, uh, laboratory uh, situations you know yeah, it's always yeah. like it, it's never <laughs> that easy to, uh, and, a, and a good yeah. example is about so about swinging recently we were talking with uh, with udo the last time we were together here in san diego we were talking about how to make a session on hang board uh, more dynamic. And it's just about making yourself swinging, you know, over the hang board just, or sometimes for me personally, and you should try, it's very challenging just 
on the regular uh, small grips you use to train on, just instead gripping them immediately off the ground, you know, just jump off on them. Just a yeah. micro jump. Just is enough. Yeah. Just start one inch, one centimeter farther and do this little jump that is already messing up because, of course, it's re it requires more coordination, uh, contact strength, and it's a, it's a little thing that is making a huge difference. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah. and again, you know, try to make as much brachiation as possible around the hang board somehow, you know, maybe yeah. just yeah. swinging and reaching a tennis ball half a meter, yeah. three feet farther, yeah. and then you come back and you, you, you On the other hand, I, I think what many people are struggling with is that it's, there's basically one thing to hang on the, on the hangboard and do a training that is really according to the uh, rules, how you gain strength, you know? And the, it's a totally different world if you try to make it easy on you. You know, but uh, for, for climbing, you have to try to make things easy. So I think the only way to bridge these uh, these things is to make it uh, uh, again hard on you, you know, to, to really make sure that you're not getting sloppy. Like even with catching things, you know, like uh, that there has to be some intention behind it. Like, for example, what you ju just said, like getting on a hold, but imagine you're on really thin ice. And it's really, it's a matter of survival for you to be on the ice as briefly as possible. You know, so uh, uh, hopefully if, you, <laughs> if you're in this mindset, you try really hard to lock off for a moment and really have this rate of force development. You know, it, again, it's a lot about the narrative. It's a lot, a lot about the scenario you're creating for yourself. Yeah, yeah the yeah. challenge. And that's yeah. an exercise all on its own. And I think for a lot of people, that's that's the hard part. I, you're, you're coming up with these challenges for yourself can be really difficult. Um, it kind of to shift gears a little bit. What's some equipment that you guys think like everybody could or should have at home that maybe, I mean, like we've talked about a jump rope. I think that's really valuable. Um, yeah, a medicine ball for sure. Okay. And yeah, yeah. why a medicine almost, ball? But medicine ball because it does so many things uh, uh, in one one part. You know, like one. I, I think, for example, like just slamming the ball is, uh, especially for females, is really valuable because you you really develop a lot of uh, explosive strength with with this, with not a whole lot of weight, and uh, so you can throw it. It's the only weight that you can throw. You know, like, and you can do that even on the balcony without uh, uh, hurting uh, anybody. And there, there is a, I think for climbers, there's a lot of uh, value in this. And then the other thing is, I, I, and I feel there's a, maybe a little bit uh, neglected by many climbers, is um, uh, in climbing is really important to absorb forces. You know, like if you think about it, if you, you, you're going for a hold and you're dining for a hold, say under cling. You know, and then it's uh, you somehow you have your, your if you watch somebody like Yanya, her upper body very often is perfectly uh, aligned to the hold, and the rest of the, her body is uh, swinging uh, wildly. So she's absorbing the, the impact really well. So coming back to the the the, the med, med ball, you can practice this. You know, every time you catch the ball, you're somehow absorbing force. You know, like uh, if you make it somehow challenging, not what, what, what I'm uh, showing right now. And maybe a one kilo uh, ball is too light, but even that, you know, if, you, if I try to catch it from, from above, see, that's not so unlikely to, to uh, 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 grabbing a hold. No, Udo, you unfortunately, different... unfortunately, your video, okay, now we're getting back. Your video was clipping okay. there for a bit, but now we can see you. Okay. See? And this is re uh, it's getting really strenuous. And this is why, why I uh, met, uh, it's again frozen. Yeah. Okay. But, but you, you can get do the same Udo idea? on the hang board. <laughs> yeah. So the, the other, so a medicine ball, I think jump rope is, is very useful. I mean, for a lot of people, that's like a, a skill that requires, it takes me a long time to 
figure out how to jump rope. And it's cool because you can really see, um, you can look on YouTube and all the different kind of patterns that you could do with a jump rope, right, Enrico? Yeah, yeah, a lot. There's a lot of footwork involved and uh, yeah. about rhythm, pace, coordination. And, and again, I really like, it's really fun because you have, of course, you, you challenge yourself. You have to learn sequences. And again, sequences with the feet, as Udo was mentioning, or sequences when you're dancing. And then you are training yourself for your projects outside because you are learning how to memorize sequences because a lot of yeah. climbers sometimes struggle when they are fatigued in being focused and be precise and remember what to do, you know, at the very last quick draw when you pump. And so there are a lot of things that you can do. And, and with the medicine ball, for example, just because I was looking at Udo playing around and we play a lot with the team too, you can easily kind of climb on a medicine ball if it's kind yeah. of big and heavy enough because, of course, you know, you can start from a plank position and then bring in one foot and then find yourself balancing with both hands and both feet on the medicine ball and then try to stand on it. Yeah, yeah, and, and you so, learn is, is really valuable, you know, be, be anything round because you really you have to apply the force from here there's no other way, you know, as soon as you're, you're off, you will fall. And so you your have to be precise. Really <laughs> your camera what? hates that medicine ball. <laughs> oh, really? as, soon yeah, as, always, bring, okay. as soon as you okay. bring it into frame, okay. it just okay. freezes. Okay. I don't know okay. enough about computers to understand why, but it's happening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, but, and, and again, this is, uh, uh, as Enrico says, there's a very valuable, you know, like really... I think it's already considered a little bit of stunt to to stand up on the medicine ball and walk on it. So yeah. you, you should make no, no, this a challenge, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and, uh, and 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 also what I like, like especially barefoot. I mean, the short uh, thing you should practice as much as possible barefoot because I feel that the feet are really neglected because we're wearing these these stiff shoes. But I think for the future, I think like really strong feet will be even more important than they are now. So going back to the, the medicine ball, the way you're standing on the medicine ball is really nice. And with both feet, you can really wrap. What I said about Adam, like engaging with the footholds, you can really wrap uh, your, your feet on it. It's just a nice sensation. You know? So already with a medicine ball, you, have, you can spend 10 years trying to master medicine ball. Yeah. <laughs> agree <laughs> yeah uh, any other i mean to me i guess one of the big kind of themes of trying to do stuff at home on your own during this time is if if you can really it should be mentally stimulating and engaging and uh it's cool i think right now it, it since people feel a little less like they need to prepare for stuff they're posting these challenges online that you could try to r replicate at even the climbing inside of their homes which is it's just cool i haven't yeah i've seen a ton of videos just the other day i saw a pretty cool one of people doing like a whole traverse yeah. but again chin. no like i mean that's fantastic yeah really fantastic but if this might be too easy you know like once you you uh, traverse through your kitchen and you run out of ideas i would still think of maybe marking your contact points and try to get uh, just imagine that the setting you know what you have done so far was maybe a, a easy boulder problem and now you're eliminating more and more holes and options for yourself so that this uh, kitchen traverse remains to be really challenging for you the eliminate version. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, guys, we're hitting a, about hour and five minute mark or something right now. But the goal is to continue to do these maybe once a week. And I think not just on this topic, but just other topics in general, and hopefully get some other uh, voices involved as well. Um, if you on chat i saw some people on here in chat but if you guys have any questions for ideas oh, okay. that maybe that you guys would like us to talk about next week uh please let us know and any any closing remarks from you guys enrico no, um, 
Sorry, Al, I didn't hear you. Any closing, any closing remarks before we, we start? I say a mega classic ciao ciao. This is the best closing possible. I don't want to remark nothing. Otherwise, <laughs> we're going to talk for another two hours. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> easy. It's pretty easy for us to go into that. Udo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm just curious what people say in the chat and uh, curious, uh, curious what you uh, want us to talk about the next time. And yeah. I hope to see some yeah. fantastic stunts. Yeah. I think it, the, the cool part is just we just want to see people i think that it is very possible for everybody to it's very rare that you don't have to prepare for a competition and have some guilt-free time to just try to do things that you haven't tried before uh spend some time learning a dance routine there's lots of people fortunately on uh like instagram live posting all sorts of different things that you can try to join along udo's doing a zumba class later today uh on instagram right Udo? No, I'm way beyond Zumba. Okay. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> Enrico's doing a Zumba class later. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. But I think, again, I think it's very important to have a lot of, you know, feedback or question because in that way we can easily, you know, develop a lot of contents and I think we can take some inspiration and from the text or from whatever, from Instagram, from whatever please, and just yeah please send us uh pictures of your home setup because i think that's something that we'd really like to see yeah. stuff that you're already doing yeah. if you have any of ideas course. what what are you guys doing at home to like uh to stay active for climbing any anything i think one of the big things that people are looking for is just inspiration i i as a coach i'm like really happy to just see what people are doing so that we can hopefully uh be better yeah, and Thank we are you. ourselves, right? We're doing the same thing. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that in between playing a like copious amounts of Animal Crossing on Nintendo. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Yeah. That's how we I have to it. talk with okay. my kids for Animal Crossing. I'm just an animal. Done. It's the best. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. Thank Good. you so much, Udo. Thanks, Rico. Nice chatting ciao, with you guys. Ciao, ciao Udo. Ciao, ciao. Bye, Have guys. a good weekend. See you next week. Good yeah. night. Good night. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Good, good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>